Okay. There we go. We're just following up on the Panga. Build, rebuild, rework. So yesterday we worked on the trailer. This is kind of a trailer slash boat situation. Uh, the Panga is one of the things that I dislike about it is their bow eye for the winch strap is all the way up here at the top. And when you're pulling a boat on a trailer, it's a, it's a real pain to have to crank this winch when it's all the way up by your head. It, it's just, it's, it's a pain in the neck. You don't have leverage and it's uncomfortable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a new bow eye down here lower and then we can lower the winch stand and uh, rework all that. Um, another thing they do is on the back side of this where the nuts go through, they also fiberglass right over top of those. So at least for now, I'm just going to leave this here. It's not going to hurt anything. It might look a little funny having two bow eyes, but it's not the end of the world. Um, so what we're going to do, and this is important. I say, yeah, I want to have this around here, but I've already gone inside the boat and mapped it out. There's a deck inside there, and uh, you don't, last thing you want to do is screw a hole, drill a hole in there, and find out that you came right into your deck. So I'm going to push the tape measure down in until it touches that deck down there. And if my memory serves me correctly, it was around 23 inches, and that's right about where it's at from the top. So I come down from the top roughly 23 inches and I know I can all the way to here that's about where my deck is inside the boat so I've already mapped it out I've climbed inside that little hole in there and it's going to be a lot of fun tightening the boat but I'm going to be all the way down here with my next bow eye and I've got plenty of adjustment on this winch stand so it'll be able to go plenty low enough to make this adjustment so over here not a lot of tools we need uh, obviously a drill uh, I got a battery drill for tightening the nuts uh, here's the new bow eye stainless steel back in plates where the nuts are going to be inside there the valve comes right to that little V and if you put a plate like this in there obviously it's it's not going to it's going to fold up it's not going to work good so I made this little uh, thicker backing plate so this will go right into the V uh, and and that way it'll take up the space and I won't have any problem fighting the nuts getting them tightened up uh, this is just some old stock I had laying around and uh, just a little tech tip for you when you go to do something like this, so many people will cut the size piece they want and then come back and drill the holes. Well, it's a real pain in the tail of pipes to drill a hole in a little piece of metal and get it all where you want it. So I map it out on the piece of metal, whatever I'm going to do. I drill all my holes and then I come back and cut that out. So I don't have to worry about a little piece of metal spinning around in the drill press and hitting me in the fingers and, and then there I go saying words I'm not supposed to say again. So here we go. Let's, let's get this going. So we don't have a long video. Um, like I said, I've already been in there. I know I want to be right about here with my with my bow eye. So I'm going to mark that. And sometimes, you know, you want to get right in the silver. Sometimes if you just take a little piece of aluminum or something and rub it on there, it'll leave a mark. Because you want to make sure you got the center. And that's uh, if you look at that, it almost looks like a pencil line. Got that aluminum will leave on there. So now you know you've absolutely got center. Now I'm going to take one of these plates that come with the bow eye and I'm going to hold it up to that and, and mark the center of my holes. And then I'm going to double check it with the bolt. See how that looks. Once you drill these holes, when you drill and you drill, when you're done, you're done. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and drill one before I drill the second one. And it's going to be a half inch, that's a half inch bolt. I'm going to start out with a small bit here. Just makes it a little easier. First thing I'm gonna do, I got a file here. I'm gonna make a little flat on that boat front so the drill bit don't skip out of place. Because it's just a little pointy spot here and you don't want to it's hard to drill on that. Not have your drill bit wander. Let 
Now I made my little black line go away. You have to redo those. I'll go do them both at the same time. And actually, this has all got to be flat. So the plate sits flat on there. You don't want it leaning left or right. It'll look goofy. I brought my angle grinder out with me too, in case I need it. It seems to be doing all right. So the whole time I'm doing this, I'm making sure I stay square with the boat so it stays in the middle. Just take your time. I know that's not exciting to watch, but you get the idea. I want to make sure we get it right. I'm going to mark my spots again. Okay, let's drill a hole. Oh God, here we go. We're going to drill a hole in our boat. Two big holes. Okay, we want to really take our time. We want that right in the center. Okay, I got that started now. Once again, I want to make sure I'm not up, down, or whatever. I want to go right straight with this here. 90 degrees. There's our first hole on our boat. We're going to sink. Okay, here's number two. Double check my 90 degrees. Looks pretty doggone good. Hopefully we did that right. And actually, if you were to mess it up, it's not the end of the world. It's easy to patch a little hole with a little gel coat mix, but we'd rather not. Okay, let's just check this out. That's right on the money. Those are li lined up just perfect. So, uh, here we go. Bigger hole. Actually, I got, I got a little uh, deburn bit here. I'm going to run that in there first. A lot of times if you try to run a big drill bit right into your gel coat like that, it'll, it'll splinter it out. And this, uh, this will help that from happening. Just go to about what you think is a half inch hole. This one needs to go a little bit more. There we go. Now my gel cone will splinter out when I drill these holes. Give them a little waller, just to make things a little easier when we put this in. Wow, look at that. That's pretty good. I'm going to clean them out just a little bit more.
So now when we put that in there, you can see this plate's not going to sit real flat on there. We got the, the edge of the boat. It's going to want to wobble on there. So here's where I'm going to take another mark. I'm going to mark this a blow and glove so I can flatten out that area. So we know we need to be flattened above and below those lines. Not a lot, but enough. I'm going to get the angle grinder on this with a little flapper disc. I got one that's wore out, more or less, so I don't cut too much fiberglass too fast. I just want to do a little bit here. Don't forget, once we put the silicone in around this, it'll fill those edges a little bit. But you want all this right. You don't want wobbling because, after all, this is the eye that you pull your boat onto the trailer with. Yeah, I've got my safety glasses on. My safety glasses slash I can see what I'm doing glasses. That looks pretty good. That's very good. And then we just got that little bit of edge. And that'll fill with silicone. That's no problem. All right, here we go. So once we get this through most of the way, then I'll fill it with silicone. When I get inside there, I'm going to grease these threads good. Stainless steel, especially these days, I don't think it's the quality it used to be. And it's got a horrible tendency to gall the threads. You'll be putting your nut on there and all of a sudden it'll stop going on. You say, oh, I'll just take it back off. And it'll go a little ways back off. And you say, oh, I better put it back on. And it'll go a little way on and that'll be it. It'll never move again. And it's a hard, hard bolt to break and get out of there. So uh, always grease those threads inside the boat when you put your nuts on there. It only comes with the regular, the regular nuts. These are all stainless steel. But I'll, I'll get those on there. And for me, I always back it up with a nylock a nylon locking thread and I know nothing's going to back off afterwards. But anyways, here's my plate. I'm going to get that on there first and I got this all the way down. That's I got a half inch power eye. That's plenty. And I'm going to go ahead and silicone this up. And a little bit extra is okay. You don't want this leaking. This is above the water line. I'm just using uh, silicone acrylic here. If it was below the water line, we'd use 5200 which is a really good product, but it's made, it's uh, very tenacious. If you ever had to take it off for any reason, it actually will pull the gel coat off. You can see I'm putting this well above where it needs to be because I want to make sure it gets in there good. And I'm going to put it all the way down that plate, down the center. So it's going to squish out everywhere when I put it in. And we'll just take a little mineral spirits on a rag and wipe off the extra. Okay, let's see how that works out. This works good to have a block of wood, not use your hand as a hammer. See, that's what would have happened to my hand. All right, I'm going to get a little clean rag. I'm going to wipe that off now, and then we're going to get inside and tighten it up. Looks pretty good so far. It's straight. I'm happy with that. Okay, I'm going up in the boat. I'm going in a little hole up there. If I'm not out in an hour, call the fire department. I got my backing plate to take up the space. I got my nuts, my washers. This is the backing plate that came with it. I'm going to see if I got room to put that over top of it. Just because it's stainless, even though I, that should be enough. 
I'll have it up there with me. There's my grease for my threads. And there's my battery operated drill to tighten it up. Boy, I'm not looking forward to this part. So far, I've been able to stand up and be human. Not so much anymore. Uh, I'm going in the hole, as they say. Right way up there is where all this came through. I don't even think you can see it. No, just barely. It's all the way in the front up there. Way up there. And you can see why I needed to make that block just to fill that gap right there where it's at. So let's get the block on first. Oh, there's no easy way to do this. That was it, it's on. I found it easier to reach up in there and use the braille method than to get my head in there. Grease on those threads. I got my nuts up here and my backing plate. I think uh, I don't see no, no reason to even use that now. That aluminum worked out nice. Of course. I don't want that nut to grab into the aluminum, so I'm going to use the backing plate. Oh, I can almost reach it. This isn't a very exciting video, but I guess you realize the pain you're going to have to go through to do this. Unless you're all open bow. It's alright, it'll be worth it when it's done. Okay. Start and stop and start and stop and as I said those stainless bolts are gonna tendency to the gall so you don't want to go fast with you want to go slow so you don't have a problem. Alright looks really good in there. Let's go back outside and dress up the inside outside. silicone looks looks perfect doesn't uh, squeeze out any extra anywhere it just looks real nice and clean and actually if you had to tighten it some more now you can tighten it from these nuts out here these will actually screw in and make it tighter but there's no need for that all right and another reason we did this this is when you're using your trailer this is one of the most important setups you set your boat on your trailer the way the boat needs to be on the trailer and then you set this all up to your bow eye afterwards and you can see one of the changes I made here the other day. The trailer, when they supplied it new, they had the right idea. They had short bump brackets in the back, and they had tall ones in the front. 
But in all their wisdom, they had mounted the wood all the way down into the bracket. You can see where it used to be. So this boat was down an inch and a half here, which made it real hard on that front roller up there, and it was actually eating into the gel coat. So I've raised it up now. It's taken all the pressure off that roller. It doesn't need to be on that roller. They really only put that there in case you try to put too big of a boat on a trailer to hit the roller and not the crossbar. So now I'm on my wide guide. I'm secured on my bunks the whole way. Now this is your most important setup on a boat trailer is your bow line, especially with an aluminum trailer, because if this isn't right, when you're going down the road, your, your bow will just bounce all over. It's driving crazy. And by having it properly set up, everything will be secure. It'll ride rock solid for you. And at the same time, be a lot less wear and tear on your trailer. So now we get to lower this all the way down. This bow eye, this roller, you want it works right tight and on top of that eye when you pull your boat up. It locks it into it, and that takes all the bounce out of everything. So this is going to work out absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. And if it's too heavy on the front when I'm done, we can always move the axles forward and take it a little off. But I don't think that's the case. All right, I'm going to tighten that up. Actually, I'm going to raise it just a smidgen, just to give yourself a, an idea of what's happening. New windstrap will be next. Uh, yeah, you can see where that strap is pulling. We want. We want that a little bit higher than that, just a smidge. You want a good straight pull. I won't say a smidge. I don't think it's going to take much. Probably right about where I got it there. You want a great, good straight pull when you're pulling your boat on. You don't want it pulling the boat down. You don't want it pulling up. You want it pulling straight on. It'll make everything easier for you. And Pain in the neck when you're at the ramp and you gotta fight your boat trailer. You don't wanna be one of those guys everybody's hollering at. Get out of the way! You're taking too long. You want to go on nice and easy and do what it's supposed to do. Gear wrenches, get one. They're great. Look at that. This one's a Matco, but you can get them in Gear Wrench or Blue Point or whatever your favorite one is. Craftsman makes them, you name it. They're fantastic. But better yet, has power tools. But you can't get the power tools up in them tight places, so that's why we can do that. All right, let's see if this winch has got enough wavos to pull this boat up. I'm not so sure, but we're going to see. Look at that. So you can see it just pulled right tight there. The bow is right tight to that roller. Now when you go down the road, there's no bounce. Everything's solid. It's like it's a steel trailer, and that's how you want because Aluminum's got a lot of flex to it. If this isn't tight here, the trailer will flex. It'll go down the road like a springboard. It actually uses the boat to hold itself rigid. So. Here we go. This was kind of a trailer setup, but at the same time, it was a panga setup because we had to get that bow I dealt with. You know, this isn't so bad. It's so far away, it'll never mess with it. If I want to tie a 
dock line to it or something, it's great. Uh, I'm happy. That wasn't too bad. Not too bad of a job. It normally takes me about two hours, but I got to work fast for the video. So thanks for tuning in. We'll do another one.